Okay, so we've got the um, the data here. We've calculated the 95% confidence intervals and the standard deviation. And what we need, we can do is we can turn off the standard deviation because that's not actually because it's only an intermediate step in the calculation. 95% confidence intervals. We don't actually need that there. We can't turn off this 95% confidence interval here because um, the actual pivot chart and the pivot table are related. So we need to have this information in the pivot chart, uh, the pivot table, so we can link the uh, error bars to that. So we can't actually just get rid of, turn these off. So what we're going to do is hide the 95% confidence intervals by just saying they've got no fill, no border colour. So they're sort of sitting there behind the scenes. What we want to do is insert the error bars in. So we click on the actual the bars. We then go pivot chart tools layout error bars more error bar options. Error bars are based on we're going to put the error bars on the average of the bill total, which is these here. So we go OK. We're then going to put in some custom uh, error bars. So we need to specify the value. We then need to put in the series where it's coming from. So we click on that. Then we know that it's coming from this pivot table is where they where the data is. So we need to put in both a positive part of the error bar plus the negative part of the error bar. And they're both the same. So essentially they both refer to the same piece. That looks pretty good. And here we go. The error bar has been updated, has been uh, now appears on the uh, on the pivot chart. So what this allows us to do is we can drill down into particular subsets such as here we go business customers in the metro area and what we find is that when we drill down into a smaller part of the, the sample a smaller part of the data set we end up with smaller sample size and therefore the statistical robustness decreases. So what we see is the error bars now overlap and therefore the statistical the way you'd interpret that from a statistical perspective is that you can't say that these two groups are, statistic, are statistically different. However, you know, if you looked at you know a larger sample such as just the business customers as opposed to business metro customers, that looks like there's no overlap and therefore you could infer some statistical difference. The benefit of this too is that you can then look at okay at say particular groups we see that at the business customers on a $79 monthly rental there's no statistical difference but if you look at the group of those customers such as 79 to 99 uh, we see oh looks like it's just marginal there so let's increase the group up there we go we can infer that those bars don't overlap. So we know that business customers between a $79 and $350 rental, there is a, a statistical, there is a significant statistical difference between on-site training and support in terms of the customer's uh, bill total. Um, so that is 95% confidence, how you insert 95% confidence intervals into power pivots.